Hi there and welcome to my channel. This is Kate in the Nest saying hi and thank you for joining me. And you are not going crazy. If you've already seen one video pop up today, this is the second. And the reason for that is the sun is shining, it's your daytime, it's the weekend. I've been watching some of the Olympics opening ceremony in the background, doing some tidying and really getting myself sorted for some making. So we are going to be working on my Roxy's Journal of Stitchery big project this afternoon. And as always, I like to share that when I get a piece, I a new piece, I like to, if I can, use it straight away and, you know, the memories come with me. So this is a piece that I got um, at Zoe's at the Green Door Studios this week as I've shared in a few videos, but this one is, I don't know if it's a tray cloth or something. I shouldn't say, but I should say, absolutely. This is going to be a wonderful addition, um, addition to my field notes, slow stitch quilt. I've also got these little bits and pieces, another dolly. I think this was from Zoe too. Yes, it was. And, um, I love those flowers and this is my latest piece and it, it's fitting that I'm going to work on this because I actually bought this tablecloth from Beck at of the so of Sobe at the craft um, show a few weeks ago. So I've been to the States and back in that time and truly I can see I can see lots of making ahead. So that's why Kate is her usual excited self. So we're going to work on that. For those who are not um, familiar with this project, as well as the accordion journal, which I've been working on in the other room, um, I'm doing a big slow stitched quilt out of panels that are huge. They're like 26 inches by 26. And my first idea is I'm appliquing all the corners flower to flower, and then I'll piece them together. The biggest learning is that I need to make a new vessel. And a few um, people at the workshops this week were interested in it. And I have to say, if you're a slow stitcher, no matter what your style, to have a squishy vessel um, to hold your projects is wonderful. So I am actually thinking that tomorrow I need to make my biggest vessel ever to hold this project. Now I won't always carry all the pieces around, but gee, it is handy to gather them. And I am trying to make space in my, I only have one room to work out of. That's why I hesitated. I was thinking what I, it's really my spare room. Um, but I'm trying to organize things into a cupboard rather than over all the beds so that someone um, who comes to stay with us might have a bed. So I'm going to get straight into it and I want to do some harvesting. And one of the things I showed this morning is that I chopped my first accordion volume six up. I'm going to use that as another book or in the, uh, another accordion journal, don't know. And that these pages were a conglomeration of the things that I liked and were going well and things that weren't going as well. And as I said, I will never destroy these. Oh, this is my exercise for the day. I haven't been out walking. <laughs> so, oh, a bit weak. And there's lots to be harvested here. So first of all, I actually like really doing this because you get unintentional things that you would never. I'll leave that birdie by himself for a while. I won't, won't destroy him. But there's a lovely little piece that's got this beautiful old bluebells on it. I think I might trim you know what I, I'm about to say. Of course, I'm going to trim the, that very bright green. So how are you? 
how is your time going so far? If it's the weekend for you, I'm delighted. Well, I think it is for all of us. And I've been just watching those amazing start of the games where, I mean, I didn't get up this morning in the middle of the darkness, in the middle of winter here, but certainly I'm enjoying the, a replay and the sense of art and music in Paris you know they are doing it so well so there's a little birdie here's the daffodil why am I showing you this because I'm going to use these pieces in my slow stitch quilt so they started out field notes accordion and now they're actually even more special because they've got their um too late. What I don't know what that's called. So let's do this as a piece. I'm actually loving that stitching that I did there. Particularly neat of Kate. Can't remember doing it. Might have been on the plane. So I think I will keep this little tulip joined. And look at that for a, for a piece that's coming with interest. Let's just trim that bit around. So layer upon layer. Um, that was a bulb. I'd leave those on, but I'm not. This is a flower that I've started and needs a center. Here's the bluebells. We looked at that before. What else have I got over here? Okay. So while I'm not actually stitching yet, I hope you can see that this is also a lot of fun. So if you've got pieces that you've done that you've pulled out and you go, oh, I wish I could use that, but it's not quite right. I'm trying to encourage you to have the confidence even if you don't have an immediate project for them to go on just to think of giving them a new and different life I'm actually more excited now that I've got these pieces um, okay so let's think of a little pink area down here so I'm actually going to keep that little red with this little pink the three tulips can stay together because that'll look nice on a corner so the idea is in fact I was thinking about it you know, how does it relate to field notes? At this point, I'm making a field of flowers. And when I've got them all together, or even I'll, I'll start when I've got three or four together, then I'm going to embellish over the top. And that's where we'll have dingly dangly notes. We'll have our little specimen jars. We'll have um, treasures, birds, and everything else that Kate can think of. Very excited and it, as we were talking the other day it is nice to have a really big project. Look at this. Now that it's broken up I can actually look at this corner up here where I thought my daffodil looked like an insect. Even if it does look like a bee in my bigger garden that will probably have a place. So I've got petals there. Might just sacrifice that. Okay, so look at that. That's a tablecloth. Bring that off. Green door. Um, okay, so all of those little bits. Oop, I'm excited. That's 
Ska se, jag tar bara över det. Okej. Okay. Lite tunn. Ingen slår näst. Lite mindre. Okej. Okay. So if I go back to these, this tablecloth. You can see that this one already has this idea of the corner is done. So I'll, I'll look, I've started, I've done some cancer. In fact, let's just start stitching and then I'll do some harvesting. But, oh no, she cannot do that because she's just seen this. And all the ideas in my head, I can do it. Now I know many of you are not up to cutting up doilies. I totally understand. I don't cut up every doily. I have a beautiful collection of ones that I will not touch. But for this project, I'm gonna need probably thousands of flowers. So it's just part of my art form, I think. That I need to harvest. We were talking about harvesting. And I suppose for me, harvest, when you harvest something rather than cut, you the sense is that you harvest it for its next stage. So if you harvest your wheat or um, rice, it becomes the next stage of its life. So that's why I talk about harvesting my doily flowers or wherever, whatever I'm getting because they're on their way to their next life. So look at that. So let's start with that. Hmm. I would have sworn I had thread in there, but that's probably what got tangled and I pulled out, which gives me an opportunity. Let's use a nice pink one. Little pink pearl -ay. even get one of those other bits with new life today. I'll just have a little audition but we'll do this one first. Find a pink cushion Kate. There we go. Just I know it sounds like I'm plugging it, but it's because I'm excited. I'm going to be filming some crochet ones tomorrow. And I'm very excited because I'm not only doing flowers now, I'm doing hearts. And I have some ideas for some wearables and, you know, potential presents for Christmas. Who knows? Just gifts for people you love. And this is this just makes me smile. Okay, here we go. So I I think that's fine. I don't really want to. I might move it up a tiny bit. Because as you would know, I don't mind sacrificing the green leaf, but I want the flowers to stand out. So here and here. How's your Roxy project going? Whatever volume you are on, I would just say it's the most wonderful place to be. And I was just reminiscing before when I was tidying up um, my projects and working out where on earth I need to, to go next, um, that it wasn't until 
I committed. I, I remember so much committing to saying, I'm going to finish this. Oh, it's not sticking into me. Um, what was I doing? The cupboard boxes, I think. I think that's where I came in. In volume five. And I use my big box. Can't even imagine. I was just thinking I could show you how I organize my room and then I thought, no, I could never do that. It is totally out of control. But I have my projects, my um, mostly finished projects in the big covered box, in my little heart shut shaped one sewing basket I have threads and special motifs and as you've seen I've used the pouches the hoof swifts the needle books every single thing is being used and now this field notes set is already making us all very excited because It's just so wonderful to have that idea of seasons, of prompts that we can make our own. So I was doing invisible, but then had fun around that little flower. And this is block four. I'm trying to work out how to, we were talking again and it's difficult to work out a system to identify your videos and playlists. And I haven't got it right yet. And because I journal, I have my journal playlists and then I have my slow stitching playlists and then I'm going to have crocheting ones. Um, I want to make it easy for you to choose which sort of strand you want to watch or if you're watching all of them you can just watch them as I make them. But I know some of my new subbies, a shout out to you, are just wondering where to start and Kate's a little chaotic. But when I look back and think I only started on YouTube in March, I do feel very blessed that I've been encouraged by your kindness, that people have given me hints and tips, and that here, I'm, here I am stitching away with you. And journaling away with you. And crocheting with you. It's so lovely to see the sun has come out and get into the little runs of days in a row where you think, will the sun ever shine? Do you enjoy that feeling of just getting up with energy and thinking, I sort of have a clearish day and I can clean and organize and have some making time? Because that's what it feels like for me today. Look, I could easily 
stop doing this stitch now because you had the hang of it, but the whole press part of it is sharing the making. And until the thread goes out, Kate will just keep on this little motif and then we'll have some fun. whether I told you this but um, the other day I had two of the panels out and Beck had a panel of a quilt that she was slow stitching and so we put them down on the table together and just saw that her garden her, her quilt block would fit very easily with mine and we talked about you know if you're worried about colors just look outside into the garden and you can see that there's a place for all colors and nature is wonderful so I'm not planning these blocks at all and I know that's very very different to traditional quilting I suppose as I said right from the beginning I want this to be a wild garden a riot of color and joy So that when you see it, it just makes you curious as well as you know, celebrating nature and the diversity of our flowers and the wonderful work of all the stitchers who've made each of these beautiful pieces of upcycled flowers. Holding them in my hand is just, I feel so lucky. All right, there we go. So here's a corner. As I said, none of the other, mm, I hope you can see this. None of the other corners are done yet, but that looks to me like it was meant to be. Let's see. No, so that piece I quite like because it's all, together. Let's see if we can show how to quickly build the garden. Put some of these other pieces out. It's probably bluebell needs to be more in the center over there. But maybe Um, let's just have a look at this center. So we've got the, these reds coming down here, which is quite a strong red. I'm not saying I don't like it, but that's about sort of continuing the story. Here's the middle piece, which is this spray of flowers off another embroidery. Let's just have some playing time. Actually that might be the piece there, the tulips come into the red and then that green goes up there. And I think I'll put that on another corner. What else have I got? A daffodil. Some pinks. Oh, that's pretty. Now that's pretty bold. But I like it. So immediately we're getting some um real texture in there but I won't do that yet so I think oh there's some prettiest okay we've got some greens here a little bit of red there how about that
will grow the garden with those reds that way. One pin. Oh, stab myself. Over here. Can you see that? I hope. So this is where the uh, the embroidery of the tablecloth is actually, I think, being highlighted now. And we notice it more. All right, these are going to go in here. And I only started, okay, a little bit more pink. Actually, it wouldn't be, I haven't used this today. So humour me, everyone. Kate's favourite. I was actually talking to my mum yesterday and I said, Mum, I just need to ask you something. And I was a bit, <laughs> I was trying to work out how, how to explain it to her. I said, do you like variegated um, threads when you work? And she said, I love them. And she said, because remember, she's a machine um, stitcher and I have to get a collection of her quilts to show you um i asked her how many she'd made and she said before she stopped counting um she was at 400 and since then she's made heaps more since she's we brought her down to live here so she's prolific and we decided that's where i must get mine from um but that yeah she said she loved <laughs> variegated cotton so much that she had it in every single colour for her machine. So I felt glad I'd asked her. And I just thought, isn't that a beautiful thing that we've never talked about that before? And she had the same love of them, but she did say she only likes it in small amounts. And I thought that's fair enough. Now that, that thread is hanging out there, I'm going to chop it off and cover it up. So I'm doing a sort of blanket stitch around here. Am I still on camera? Yep. sun is about to go on the next um, leg of his driving adventure. He's driven up from Victoria and um, I've had a very special mum moment today, one that I will always treasure. I said earlier this morning I'm coming in to make a, 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 a stitching video and he said, okay, and then just before I, I closed the door, he said, Mum, do you think with your stitching you could do something with these? And he showed me his um, favourite, um, what do you call it? He, he buys from op shops. You know, he's one of this wonderful generation that want to save, you know, and really conscious of um, saving many things. He is so conscious of lights and heating when we don't need it. And um, so he had this, his favourite pair of navy pants that he bought from an op shop, I think, two or three years ago. And they were just starting to split near the back pocket and a little bit below that. And he said, would you be able to do something with these? So I did my first piece of darning so 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 long and I just thought so beautiful like we talked about darning as you know as a real thing again now and it's important you know he said I don't want to um, not wear these trousers because they've got a split and um, yeah so that was special So I'm sending him back with those and he also <laughs> is taking quite a number of old books. He went out to the Reviver Centre that I took him to oh, a few 
before he moved. Um, he went out by his own, himself yesterday, found some amazing old books. So my husband and I were saying, look at that, isn't it? It's so wonderful when you have kids and you you just love them and let them be themselves and it's just every part of your journey is rewarding. Okay, so I'm blanket stitching around that piece, but because I'm here now and that's leading on to this other um, applique piece. I'm going to just have some final fun with some lovely bright pink running stitch. And why this is quite addictive is every piece of this so far has been linen on linen so the needle goes through and it's just a pleasurable sew. And just a reminder if you haven't um, had the chance to watch from the beginning and you don't have to. I'm sorry, I backed it with a um, blanket from the op shop and I find that sewing linen embroidering um, linen with wool on the back is my most favourite, favourite thing. It just feels wonderful. So we're going to make a choice here. Oh no, well we, I was going to say I had to make a choice but it's the choice has been made for me. See there's a blank in here and I was going to say I could trim that but then it goes up here do I want to cut that in and make that a feature? I think I do because I do have a choice to make. I'm just going to take a little bit of, the, it's like journaling and having white space around a, a flower or a bird, a butterfly. This becomes a bit more interesting with the stitching then. I'm stitching at a funny angle now. Why is that? Because I don't want to stitch it together. And I realise I'm going quiet because I'm loving it so much. <laughs> it's very quiet and I can just stitch by natural light. Let's put a pin in there. And 
I just know I'll never get bored with this project because nine blocks with endless flowers and layer upon layer to be done. It's not only going to keep me busy, but it's going to help me be creative and inventive in all sorts of ways. And I just love that already today, I've recycled my own <laughs> first accordion journal into something that's going to um, be far more visible in the end, actually, those pieces. And I can hero them and know the story. So nothing is lost. It's just added to. So here we go, nearly out of thread. And I can show you how far we've come. And at this time, I'm not doing any fancy stitching. Just stitching with the colour that feels good. And how much have I got? No, not enough. I had an idea that I'd make a little daisy here, but in pink to join the red and the purple, but I'm not going to have enough. So tempted though. <laughs> Make a tiny one. Even if it's only got three petals to make a flower. This is so much fun. So let's hold our breath. I could have just done seed stitch, but I really felt like finishing with a flower. Um, it's gone unfeathered, so I will join another one in there. And so it's a story to be continued. Here's a little peep of some of the flowers. Oh, not flowers some of the hearts that I've been making and um, I'm not going to put a heart on here yet but I will be putting flowers all over the top of these quilt blocks three-dimensional okay so I think that's been enough for you to get an idea so this is field notes slow stitch quilt volume six of the girls thank you rachel and sarah i want to say that every single time we do not take it for granted you've inspired us um and we we so <laughs> see i can't stop i will stop though and just hold this up like this and say thank you so much for being with me today and until my next video happy stitching keep well take care and i'll see you next time bye